Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Printscape. Today I'm going to show you how to replace the stock springs on your Ender 3 or Ender 3 Pro. Uh, this process will also apply to pretty much any of the printers in the Creality lineup or any printer that you want to switch out the springs on. It's not a difficult process at all, but before we get into how to do it, let's talk about why. So the springs that come on the uh, printers to begin with are fairly cheap and they cause a lot of movement. You can kind of shift them back and forth. There's not much tension in the actual spring itself, and I'll show you that uh, once um, I show you these two side by side. What this ends up doing is causing leveling issues uh, sometimes during a print if things if tension ends up uh, kind of shifting or you put too much pressure on one side or another. Um, I guess it's a little bit less of an issue if you're running a BL touch, but it's still an issue. Uh, it also forces you to level the bed more often. Uh, again, less of an issue with the BL touch, but you still want to at least have a decent foundation for the BL touch to work off because it can only do so much. Um, so this is a relatively cheap upgrade and not hard at all. So this would probably be one of the first upgrades I would do if I was doing this all over again, just because of the benefits and the simplicity. Alright, so before we go and get started, if you guys haven't already, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, our channel is growing pretty quick, which is great, and it's all thanks to you guys. So again, thank you. Alright, so what we're going to go ahead and do first is um, take off one of these springs so I can show you what it looks like uh, side by side, and then we'll go ahead and uh, do all of them. So one thing I would recommend against is taking off all the springs at once unless you have to. So I would just go ahead and loosen all of them up so there's no tension on them, and then just go through and replace them one by one. Uh, mainly focusing or paying extra care around this back one because you have the um, heating element and the thermistor connected back there. So you want to make sure that you're not going to damage that. All right, so here is the kit that I bought. It's got the springs and the, these aluminum wheels. Uh, the aluminum wheels, they just look cool um, they just, and came with the kit that I ended up buying. Uh, so it's not going to be a requirement. So if you only wanted to get the springs, uh, start there. But like I said, the kit that I got came with them. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use them. When I bought these, I also bought a couple other accessories for some videos I'm working on, including one that will be coming up here pretty soon, and that is converting this over to a direct drive system. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, so I know a couple of you guys have asked for it, uh, so I would expect that to be out sometime in the, probably the next couple weeks or so. Uh, if there are any other videos you would like me to do, uh, just go ahead and leave a comment below, and I will try to get that done for you. All right, so let's go ahead and open up this bag. Here we got our four springs and then the four wheels. I, again, guys, I don't think the wheels are a uh, necessity. Um, they're just gonna screw on just like these and then these have the metal inside of it. It's not like it's plastic all the way through, uh, but these just look cooler and it wasn't much more. I think it was a couple dollars more. So I just bought them. All right, so let's go ahead and take this one off here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Uh, first, I want to loosen these up a little bit, like I mentioned to begin with. Mainly just taking the tension off so that I can move things around a little bit easier. Um, you can also take off your magnetic plate as well, or if you have a glass spill plate, just to make it a little bit easier. So we want to go ahead and lift this up here, take out this spring. All right, so I'm going to zoom in on these springs really quick just to kind of show you the difference. All right, guys, so here's the stock spring and here's the replacement spring. Uh, if you actually hold both of them, you can feel how cheap this one is in comparison. And then if you push it on both of them, you can feel the resistance difference between the two. Um, this one is much harder to compress um, versus this one, just barely any force at all, you're compressing it. Um, one thing I did want to make a note of here is the length difference. The replacements are longer, so we're going to have to relevel the bed, which we would have had to anyways, but you're going to want to account for that. All right, so I'm going to zoom back out a little bit and focus on the printer. We'll go through and swap these out. All right, so let's go ahead and put the replacement one in here. Uh, we'll do one side at a time here. Uh, so we're just going to pop that in, lift this one up a little bit here, and take this spring out. Again, you want to be careful not to uh, move this around too much uh, just because it is attached to uh, the heating element and such. 
right, so this will slide out. And then we'll slide the new one back in. All right, and then go ahead and push these two in. All right, now with these two both in, we can kind of uh, go ahead and push them through and put the wheel on just loosely. All right, now that we got that side on, we can go ahead and do the other side. So just turn the printer a little bit. And then we can take off these wheels. All right, now that we got all four of these in place, let me go ahead and zoom out on the camera, then we can talk about a couple things. All right, so now we can go ahead and put on our build plate, whether it be this dock magnetic one or your glass one or whatever the case may be. And then we have to go through and re-level it. I don't want to spend much time in this video showing you how to level a build plate. I did a full video covering that, so I'll link to that in the description below. Um, but it is important that you do that. Um, and then uh, with these springs, it will stay level uh, much longer and you're gonna have less issues with it coming out of level just because they can properly hold the tension unlike uh, these ones. And then as you can see here, the red kind of just makes it pop a little bit more. Again, that's not necessary, um, but I thought it was kind of neat. Uh, if you have any questions on the process, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks. I, I wanted to spend a second here talking about leveling and then so you can see, see the process really quick. Um, and then I will link to the video I did on leveling in the description below. Uh, that video covers leveling with the default firmware and um, the standard uh, panel. Um, so it's going to be a little bit different here. So we're just going to go to menu and then go to movement and leveling and then go to the point we're working on. So we'll go to point one first and then um, right now it's already at that point. So then we can go ahead and uh, do our leveling. All right, with the BL touch, it's a little bit different um, just because it always tries to engage that every time. So what we're gonna do is just go ahead and lower uh, the extruder to a certain point where we can get a good distance from the nozzle to the bill plate and then we'll disarm the steppers and we can move it from point to point. Um, if you don't have the BL touch, you would just go into movement and then leveling and then just go to each one of your points and then level it with your cardstock, which I talked about in the previous video that I went to uh, below. All right, so first let's go ahead and go into menu, um, movement, leveling, and disarm XY, uh, just so we can move this around. All right, so we wanna get a little bit of tension on each one of these springs and make it so it looks level. Then we can kind of move this back and forth on the Y axis, just to make sure we're not scraping. All right, so we're good there. I'm gonna go ahead and move this to the other side. Okay. Now that we got it to a point where it's pretty level, just visually across each side, I'm gonna go ahead and lower the extruder a tad bit. So I'm gonna move. And then on the Z axis, I'm gonna just bring it down just so we're getting to a point where it's about even with my cardstock. and you want it to just scrape a little bit. So we'll use this as a starting point. That's right where it needs to be. Then we'll take this across, make sure we're not scraping, which we are. So I'm gonna just go ahead and lower this a little bit by hand, just keeping it down, and then adjust the tension here. All right, that's pretty good. Now we'll go to the back, make sure we have the same issue. No, it was good. Um, all 
All right, so we're scraping here. Now we'll go back over to this side. And we're a little bit too high. All right, then we'll go in the center and make sure we're about good. Yep. And then uh, you can go around one more time, but I think I'm pretty good here. Um, yeah, that's fine. All right. You'll typically want to go through it a couple times, but with the BL Touch, as long as we're somewhat level, uh, we're good to go. And like I said, the process is different, uh, whether you have the stock board and the stock display versus uh, the BL Touch with it or going over to the SKR Mini with or without the TFG35. So each process is a little bit different. Uh, that's why I spent a couple minutes here kind of showing you what it looks like at a high level with this interface with the BL Touch. Next thing we want to do is go ahead and adjust the Z offset again. So we'll go ahead and go back. We want to turn, um, go into ABL and run a new uh, mesh so it gets an updated program from the uh, settings I mean from the um, adjustments and then we'll do the Z offset All right, now that it did that grid, just go ahead and hit back. It's gonna prompt you to save it. Hit okay. Um, so now it saved that settings for the new mesh. And now we wanna go ahead and do Z offset and then go ahead and hit off, the turn it on. And then that's gonna go through and uh, center it so that we can adjust the Z offset. Um, before setting these springs, as you can see on the display, I was at a negative 1.05, so we'll see what we end up with here. All right, so that's still a little bit high. As you can see, I'm getting no resistance at all with my card here. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring it down more. Uh, you can choose whether you wanna do small increments of 0 0.01 or if you wanna do larger one by changing this here. Uh, but I'm pretty close, so I'm sticking with 0 0.01. All right, so I like that right there, getting just enough resistance. Now, if you're using thinner paper, which typically I think they recommend you use standard uh, printer paper, not cardstock, you don't want to get much resistance at all. But I like to feel the resistance, so that's why I go with a little bit thicker paper. Um, all right, so now that we got that, uh, we'll go ahead and go back, and then we want to save that. So we'll go to uh, settings, machine. Uh, EE prom and then save so that way it keeps those settings all right and that's all there is to it um, again there's always more steps if you have a BL touch and additional modifications uh, but if you don't it's a very straightforward upgrade all right guys so that's all there is to it as you can see the process was really easy uh, it's going to be especially easy if you don't have the BL touch or other modifications you have to worry about um, but it's definitely a worthwhile upgrade and one that I would highly recommend. It's not expensive at all. Um, so just go ahead and do yourself a favor and do it. Um, again, with the BL Touch, uh, we had to go through the process of manually leveling it and then setting the mesh and then adjusting the um, Z offset again. But it wasn't difficult. It just took a couple extra minutes. So if you have any questions, go to leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks.